The truth does not hurt anyone or anything. <coughs> so why am I in pain when I tell the truth? <laughs> What's happening? Are you feeling the other person's emotions? Not usually. If I'm in pain, I'm feeling my own emotions <laughs> generally. Letting go of, uh, of old beliefs. Of the error. Yeah. All error creates terrible, terrible emotions. Mm -hmm. Like all of the emotions you feel that you are trying to run away from <laughs> have all been created by error. By emotions that you believe to be true but that have entered you inside of your heart. And when they come out of you, they feel like pulling out like barbs, arrows out of you. There is so much <coughs> emotional pain associated with the error leaving you. And when the Apostle John was living on earth, he, he had this illustration passed to him from the Spirit of, he had a dog, his dog was called Sandy, and little Sandy was a little Jack Russell. And he had this dream one night where Sandy had been shot with barbs all over her, and she was, had all these arrow-headed barbs all sticking into her. And what would John do with all these arrows sticking into Sandy? Now, he could just shoot the dog, but that's not a very loving act, is it? If he loves the dog, what would he do is he'd pull out each one, wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. But then he'd have to, like, each one is going to be painful coming out of her, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Each one, pull out one, she'd be whimpering and crying and feeling all these emotions, you know, feeling all these feelings. And then pull out another and she'd feel all these feelings of pain and hurt and all that, and that would pass and you'd pull out another. And that's exactly what God's doing to you. God is trying to pull out all of these emotional errors out of you. Right? And He's trying to do it in the most loving, caring possible way. But all emotional errors hurt. And when they release from you, and the only way they release is by you being in truth, it hurts. But it's not the truth that's hurting you. You understand? It's the emotional error leaving you that's hurting you. Me last night because I had heart attack pains. Yeah. <laughs> Nearly in the ambulance and the whole bit. Yeah. So that's an emotional, emotional release happening. The key is to, they're all caused by grief. Yeah. So the key now is to connect more to that grief because there's more there. So, so allow yourself to connect to that grief and experience that grief. Right? And then as you do that, you'll find that the feelings will de, de intensify, you know, they'll go down. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And you notice I've mentioned a few things like, uh, how many of you have been asked, see you later, how many of you have been asked, oh, am I overweight? <laughs> do you think I'm overweight? And, and what do you say to the person, particularly if it's a lady asking the question? Terribly <laughs> 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 overweight. <laughs> you see, what happens with those kind of questions is, what is the person really wanting? Reassurance. They're wanting lies, yeah. <laughs> Let's be blunt about it. They want lies because they do not want to feel the truth. So it, it is alright if I would say, yeah, yeah, you're fine, you're fine, yes, it's okay? No. no. The truth is, what do you feel? <coughs> is the person overweight? Do you but feel the person is? You say we should accept, you know, everybody has different opinions. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you're allowed your opinion too. Oh, okay. And if I'm asked my opinion, mm -hmm. Then I'm allowed to give it. Do I like if a lady comes up and she's overweight? And I say, well, yes, you are overweight. Do you know why? <laughs> it's because of this shame emotion that you're holding on to that's affecting this area here, and it's, and it's this. Do you know what I mean? Like we can talk about that then, can't we? Right? Like you will find as you deal with your emotions, your weight will just fall off you. It will. You're holding on to emotion. You're holding on to weight because you're holding on to emotions. If if you're feeling overweight, let's be honest about it. Right? There's all these taboo subjects, isn't there? Like the like. question, yes, <laughs> So historically, what have you been told? It's not kind to say that. But what's the kindest thing? The kindest thing is to trigger the emotion inside of a person to help them release it so they no longer hold on to it anymore. That's the kindest thing. About fashion. 
Yes, everybody has, you know, different style, dress yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. And we can have different opinion on that, you know. Of course. Yeah, how could I say, you know, oh, no, you dressed awful, you know. What well, you say is my opinion, you're dressing <laughs> awful. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't have to take my opinion. No, that's okay. And to be honest with you, if I had some self-worth and self-love, I wouldn't even care to ask you for your opinion <laughs> about how I'm dressing. Okay. Do, do it's you, a, it's okay to soften okay. the edge a little bit, though, surely. You know, you could say to the person... Is it, is it <laughs> <laughs> yes, and be quite honest as well. Because if the person's wearing all the wrong colours together, you can say, well, they're not colours that I would wear, but if you're happy with those colours, then yes, they're, they're, they're fine. Then that would be truthful, but it would still be saying that I don't really like those colours together. No, you're not really saying that. Yes, I do. No, you're not. <laughs> They're not, not what I would choose for myself. So say that. So, yes. Because, because I don't that. think that they would suit me. But why not tell her the truth? She's asked you for her opinion. Tell her the truth of how you feel. Why not tell her the truth? Because you know why? Because you're afraid of her emotional response. Yes, I don't. And if you're basing your response on fear, what are you doing? Are you loving the person if you're basing your response on fear? No. No, you're not. All right? So, and this is, gets back to the previous comment I made. You want to embellish the truth. You want to make it more comfortable and more palatable. Honestly, you've got no idea if you feel that way. Because, from God's perspective, the truth is already the most beautiful thing she has created. The truth is what sets you free. It's the most beautiful thing God has created. You can't embellish it. You can think you can, but you're really just thinking that you're better than God. That's all you're feeling. The truth is, the truth being stated exactly as you feel it right in that instant is exactly the thing the person who's asking you the question needs. Mm -hmm. And deep down that person's actually worried about it, so they're actually seeking yeah, the truth. Yeah. They, yeah, deep down yeah. they're worried about it. Mm -hmm. They're but seeking their addiction to be satisfied. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing by telling them the truth is not satisfying their addiction and allowing them to connect with the emotion, which is the thing that's going to lead them closer <coughs> to God. Mm -hmm. All right? So by speaking, speaking the truth in every single instance, what you're actually doing is you're helping the person to actually connect to the emotional resistances they have with God every single time. And you can't embellish that. You can't make it better than it is. The truth is just so beautiful that eventually you'll come to just love it for itself. And that's even the truth of your own opinion. And you're allowed your own opinion. Even when you're a celestial spirit, you're going to be allowed to have your own opinion. So, another celestial spirit comes along and says, you reckon I look pretty cool today? Like, nah, not what I'd wear. You can wear what you want. That's fine. Alright? You'll have no trouble with that. That's called variety. And if you would accept variety, but it's not what you need to accept. Right? You don't want it. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that you're not loving the person. And if they have an emotional response to your comment, what's the issue? They want your approval. Exactly. They're wanting or needing something from you. Right? And if you give it to them, what are you doing? You're just enabling them to stay in, away from the feeling that they have just attracted for you to treat them. That's what you're doing. Is there any space not to say anything at all? Certainly, there are times when, like I said uh, in the first century, uh, that it's pointless to cast per pearls before swine. And I wasn't judging people by that. What I was actually saying was that if a person is rejecting truth already, it's pointless for you to actually tell them more. Do you follow me? Right? Why bother casting more pearls of wisdom, which is all to do with truth, when the person's already rejected the ones you've just given them. I find this happening a lot in interactions, in groups. Like somebody will ask me a question and I give them the answer. And then somebody asks me, no, but I don't think you understand what I was asking. And then they ask me a question in a different way. And I give them the same answer. And then they, don't, they say, no, no, I don't think you understand. What, what's really happening here? They want a different truth than what I've given them. That's all. And so what do I have to do then? I've just got to stop. I've got to stop. You don't want to accept my answer. That's fine. You're allowed to not accept my answer. That's fine too. But I'm just telling you the truth. And you can do exactly the same. You don't have to 
tell the truth constantly to people over and over and over again if they're rejecting it already, but give them the opportunity to reject it or accept it. And the only reason why we don't in most cases is because we are too afraid to experience our own emotions about their rejection. So it's a heartfelt intention. You have a heartfelt intention to be of service in truth. <clears throat> and that's it. A heartfelt intention to live in love, which also means living in truth. I mean God's truth. Divine love, divine truth. A heartfelt intention to live in those spaces. <clears throat> When you have a heartfelt intention to live in those spaces, you won't be afraid of what other people feel about your truth. And if you are afraid, you will realise that there's an emotion inside of you that has yet to actually come to understand truth. So all of us at some point feel afraid about truth, don't we? Like some of you get to a state where it's... I don't, know, I don't know if I can say this right. Because you know even what the response is probably going to be in many cases, don't you? Right? You have this feeling, oh, the response is going to be this or the response is going to be that. And you sometimes don't know whether that's just your feeling or whether you know the person so well that you know they're going to respond a certain way, right? But honestly, in most cases, if you can just allow yourself to say the truth, whatever is in your heart, emotionally, will come out. Whatever is in their heart emotionally that's still locked up will come out.